No, I'm coming back. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, the table trail calls Jim Ambrosino. Sorry, Council. Uh, are other witnesses to come out of order is here? The gentleman on jury duty? Certainties or even, I think, any specific identification of who those witnesses were and when they would appear. So um, I'm not unwilling to, to, to do that, but just so the record is clear on what the stipulations were. The department specifically indicated that two hours would be okay on Monday for the petitioners to bring in a witness out of order, a witness or two out of order if they needed to. What happened to the fellow by telephone? What was it? Did you read it? This is from Texas? Yes. He is also on jury. Uh, okay. We're in Texas. Let's get this. We know. It's in our two hours. Two more hours? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> two hours. Call your witness then. Uh, Brett McClellan. McClellan? Please uh, take this witness stand, please, sir. Hello. Hello. All right. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. State your name for the record. Joe Britt McClung. How do you spell your last name, sir? M C C L U N G. Your witness? Good afternoon, Mr. McClung. Thank you for coming here. My name is Bill Walsifer, and I'm the counsel for the petitioner. Uh, Walls Coalition of Florida. Are you familiar with the organization? Yes. And what is your uh, personal residence? I live um, in Hamilton County, and I live about 1,200 feet from where the pipeline will be going through. Do you refer to the proposed Sable Trail transmission pipeline? I'm against it. Um, and what is your occupation? Um, I do uh, handiwork, home repair, painting. How long have you lived uh, uh, at that location? Um, going on three years. And prior to that three years, were you in Florida? Yes. And which county were you in? I was in Pinellas County. And have you ever done any uh, scuba diving in your lifetime? Yes, professionally. Professionally? Yes. Yeah. And have you, uh, what kind of certifications in scuba diving have you had? I'm open water. I'm also uh, I retired deadhead logger under the supervision of the Department of Environmental Protection in Florida. Did we say under supervision, was there a, a Department of Environmental Protection certification? Yes. And did you receive that certification? Yes. And personally, uh, what years were you most active in diving? This part, let's say this part of the state. Between, oh, excuse me, up there to relevance to the relevance is that the gentleman has been uh, offered testimony if the court will allow it. Of um, his observations as a DEP certified diver in protected areas, uh, those areas being um, uh, parts where the uh, pipeline will run, and areas 
discussion that we can have later. Oh. What years were you an active diver? Uh, I believe I was, I was certified between 2001 and 2006. And during those years, did you in fact seek for uh, dead headlocks? Yes, actively. Actively? Yes. Actively. I, I, I held the most permits of any logger out there so for square mileage or for the mileage. So about how much square mileage would you have covered in a, a let's say, in a month? Um, 20, 20 miles. Have you dove in state park boundary? Uh, no, the DEP um, had specific rules GPS onto our permit that only allowed us to log up to Interstate 10, which is approximately two miles south of the state park, and above the state park up to the music park, which I don't know, it might be four miles up from there, from the state park. So it would be on uh, each side of the uh, preserved area? Uh, yes, uh, they had. They told us that the sturgeon migrate up there. Um, they would shut us down between April 1st and July 1st, I believe. It was around three, four month time when the sturgeon would go up in that area and breed. It was their DP said it was the main breeding area for the sturgeon. So. Would DEP want you to monitor the sturgeon's activity? Um, Casually, they had spoken to us about reporting the sturgeon, but never any physical, you know, and never any contract to do it or anything. So it was uh, the primary purpose to find dead headlocks? Objection leading? Yes, that's what I did. I was a dead headlocker after. Yeah. And could you explain uh, briefly uh, to the court what a dead headlock is? Uh, it's an uh, old axe cut, pioneer cut log, cross cut or cross cut with big bow saw or axe cut uh, and then they drag them to the river with mule team and make log rafts and float them down to wherever they would take them out to harvest them and cut them. And for, uh, in, in your observations have you noticed any uh, cracks at the bottom of the water topography? They're everywhere. They, now I can't say through the state park, but the 100 miles that I had, 120 miles that I had on my permit, everywhere I would go, every day, I would see a vent or a crack or a fist sized spring somewhere. They're not always huge. Right. They're underneath that line everywhere. It's cold water spring? Oh, yes. And have you seen any sinkhole activity? Uh, Below the waterline. Any what, sir? Sinkhole activity? Um, no. Uh, there are springs that are <coughs> under the river, not on the bank, or have a spring run. Some are physically in the bottom of the river. So you'll, uh, I used a electric machine with lights on it that would drag me back and forth across the river as I searched these logs. And as I did, I could feel the water change in temperature and I sometimes turn around and just go explore and see what it was and there would be they could be anywhere from this big to a couple feet in diameter or they might be a crack in the bottom of the river that produce the cold water. And how many uh, acres do you own? I have you a, live on I should I live on ten. I have thirty more down south of the develop. Do you grow any food on your acreage? Yes. Do you have any sinkhole activity on your image? Uh, I do have a sinkhole. It's uh, not a major one, but it is. Uh, it's a sinkhole. You, you can look down, <laughs> look down in it. So. What I had uh, asked earlier, if you remember, of the Walls Coalition of Florida, I, uh, I did ask that. I'm going to ask you another question. Are you the Walls Coalition Inc., whose parents' company is in Georgia? Are you a member of that organization? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, you have any personal concerns as a landowner in this proximity? Objection, Your Honor. I made a ruling about this. Thank you, Your Honor. I have nothing further. Thanks, Thank you. Just a, a few follow-up questions, Your Honor. Sir? 
Your property isn't actually on the pipeline. No, it's a quarter mile. Eighth of a mile, I believe. I'm not sure. I haven't done a math on it. <laughs> and, and, and just so I'm clear, you were referring to, to deadhead logging on the river. Were you referring to the Wichita or to the Swanee River? I was permitted to both. Okay. And so you would deadhead log on both those rivers? Yes. Um, have you ever heard uh, the, the term that the, these rivers were referred to as Blackwater Rivers? Blackwater? No. And are the rivers murky at times? Yes. Um, I imagine that requires a special skill to deadhead log in murky waters. It does. Special lights. And do you have to use those special lights and equipment every time that you deadhead log? No. A lot of the times the river is very nice and pristine and we just go ahead and move along with our machines and don't need the lighting. Okay. Um, but even when it is murky, you're able to do work with the, the equipment that you use? Uh, yes, up until we don't have about two feet of visibility, and then we give it up. It's too dangerous. Thank you. I have no further questions. Just a couple. You're an open water diver, is that correct? Yes. And when did you say you were a deadhead logger? Um, I approximately between 2001 and 06. I, um, I didn't research my... Um, go through my files and dig it up, but it was probably five, six years that I was a deadhead logger. So as a deadhead logger, you basically find these deadhead logs, yep. you go down, hook a chain about it, around them, pull them out of the mud, is that right? right. Yeah. And you said you have a dove in the state park area? We were not permitted <coughs> due to the antiquities, the environmental, uh, they just wanted to preserve the environment in that area. And then they also told us that it was the main um, refuge or whatever you, I should call for the uh, sturgeon to come up out of the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. They come up there and breed and they didn't want us in there, but they didn't want us in there anyway, so I don't know why they, they added that. It just, <laughs> another thing from going in there and logging. Um, you indicated that you, Sometimes in your diving, you feel temperature change. Yes. Okay. And is that a, called a third plot? Yes. Okay. It can be caused by a number of different things, right? Uh, it can be, yes, but mainly uh, the water's quite chilly, and if you feel a thermocline in, in the river, usually it's a vent or a spring or something that you just passed. It could be something else, right? I'm not, I don't know, to tell you the truth. I've never felt thermocline that wasn't uh, related to a spray. Have you ever dove in salt water? Sure. You feel a thermocline there when you dive deep? Fresh water, I'm specifically speaking of. And specifically to what, a river? Yes. Thermocline, yes, I feel them all the time. I'm diving the Gulf of Mexico this coming week, so I'll be feeling one out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As to the preserved area that you say you were not allowed in, do you know if the uh, proposed pipeline uh, enters into that area? Um, I, I know where the Wilkes property is and I know the transmission power line that runs towards the river in that direction, generally towards the Swanee. I have a pretty good idea where it crosses. Based on uh, that idea is, is that part of the preserved area you were not allowed in? Yes. And when you were diving down here, did you uh, observe any caves? I didn't spend hardly any time at all in the area because we weren't actually, you know, allowed to go in there and take the woods. So I wouldn't. I had other places to go. I'm just sorry, but in the areas that you were allowed in, objection. Now it looks like an additional direct. He didn't ask any questions about caves. Uh, I misunderstood. I may have. Bell Ellison. The caves in the area didn't die. Caves? And caves. Oh, they're, they're everywhere. I mean, every eighth of a mile, there's something out there. There's some kind of vent, some kind of crack. A little gusher coming out of the side of the bank or a big spring. The whole thing from I-10. And I'll, I'll, actually, it starts about three or four miles above I-10, and uh, that's where the main springs start, and then all the way to, I was permitted all the way to uh, alternate 19, 124 miles, and I would see 
There's just too many accounts. They're just everywhere. Thanks. I'm not the friend of Thank you, sir. You may step down.